Good morning, people. We are on the Love Dare, Day 39, Love Endures. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. Of all the things love dares to do, this is the ultimate. Though threatened, it keeps pursuing. Though challenged, it keeps moving forward. Though mistreated and rejected, it refuses to give up. Love never fails. Many times when a marriage is in crisis, the spouse who is trying to make things work will go to the other, declaring in no uncertain terms that no matter what has happened in the past, he or she is committed to this marriage. Their love can be counted on to last. They promise. But not wanting to hear this, yet the other spouse holds their position. They still want out. They don't see this marriage lasting long term, nor do they even want it to anymore. The partner who has just laid his or her heart on the line, extending the olive branch, can't handle the rejection, so they withdraw their statement. Fine, if that's what you want, that's the way it'll be. But if love is really love, it doesn't waffle when it's not received the way you want it to be. If love could be told to quit loving, then it's not really love. Love that is from God is unending and unstoppable. If the object of its affection doesn't choose to receive it, love keeps giving anyway. Love never fails. Never. That's what Jesus' love is like. His disciples were nothing if not unpredictable. After their final Passover meal together, when Jesus told them, they would all forsake him before the night was over. Peter declared, even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. Matthew twenty six thirty three and 35. All the other disciples echoed the same promise. But later that night, Jesus's inner circle of followers, Peter, James, and John, would sleep through Christ's agony in the garden. On the way to Christ's crucifixion, Peter would deny him three times in the courtyard. But at that precise moment, the Bible says Jesus turned and looked at him. Luke twenty two sixty one. His men had failed him again, within hours of their sworn promises. Yet he never stopped loving them, because he and his love are the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. When you have done everything within your power to obey God, your spouse may still forsake you and walk away, just as Jesus' followers did to him. But if your marriage fails, if your spouse walks away, let it not be because you gave up or stopped loving them, because love never fails. Of the nine fruits of the spirits listed in Galatians 5, the first of all is love. And because the unchanging Holy Spirit is its source, the same Holy Spirit who dwells in the heart of all believers, then the love he creates in you is unchanging as well. It is based on the will of God and the calling of God and the word of God, all unchanging things. The Bible declares them irrevocable, Romans eleven twenty nine. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. Luke twenty one thirty three. Only a few days ago, you were love dared to build your marriage on the word of God. That's because when all else fails, the truth of God will be will still be standing. Along the way, you have also been dared to be patient, to be unselfish, to sacrifice for your mate's needs. These are not just loving ideas. Existing in isolation, each quality of love outlined in this book is based on the love of God, captured and expressed in the word of God, the unchanging word of God. No challenge or circumstance can occur that will ever put an expiration date on him or his love. Therefore, your love, made of the same substance, bears the same unchanging characteristics. Love never fails. So today your dare is to put your unfailing love into the most powerful personal words you can. This is your chance to declare that no matter what imperfections exist, both in you and in your spouse, your love is greater still. 
No matter what they've done or how often they've done it, you choose to love them anyway. Though you've been far from steady in your treatment of them over the years, your days of being inconsistent in love are over. You accept this one man or woman as God's special gift to you, and you promise to love them until death. You're saying to your spouse, even if you don't like what you're reading, even if you don't like me, I choose to love you anyway forever because love never fails. The dare for today, spend time in personal prayer, then write a letter of commitment and resolve to your spouse. Include why you are committing to this marriage until death and that you have pur purposed to love them no matter what. Leave it in a place where your mate will find it. One of the questions it asks are, what are some of the hesitations you had in writing this letter? How do you expect your spouse to respond to it? How did God help you in writing it? And what did the process teach you about yourself? Journaling and writing are very powerful. Um, maybe I should do some Bible research on that on the side and see what it says about it, if anything. But I've noticed in my own life how how much it can help me realize what I've actually learned. And I, I forgot very easily. And that helps us remember. And one of my best friends, he sent me a text one time and it was just a short text about things he liked about me and why he wanted to be my friend. And I saved it because when I'm being tempted to stop loving, when I'm feeling uncared for and unloved by his actions, whether right or wrong, when I'm being tempted to give up and to stop trying, and I'm being tempted to leave or run or give up, When I'm worn down and beaten and tired. I can go back to that and remember. And it helps me feel encouraged. And knowing what he values in me. And knowing what I do that helps him feel loved, encourages me to keep trying, to keep loving, to keep going. It works the same with God. We can be tempted to give up and to stop trying for ourselves. But when we read God's word and we see what he loves about us, it encourages us to keep trying and keep being those things and to keep doing those things. When God tells us what he values, the characteristics that are important to him, the personality traits that are important to him, it encourages us. We shouldn't, instead of being down on ourselves that we aren't those things as often as we should be, we should feel encouraged to keep trying those things because we know that's what he loves. Works with humans too. He modeled it for us so that we know how to do it. We might not be good at it, but at least we know what we're supposed to be doing. And the more we can practice it, the more we can push through these feelings, the more we can put them aside and do right, 
the more our love will reflect him and his love and be never failing. Our struggles are just opportunities to shine. And they're not easy, but it's worth it. So get out there today and shine. Even if you're feeling broken down, worn out, Call on the name of the Lord and he will give you rest. I love you guys and he loves you. Keep up the good work.